pleased to um, return to open session from executive session. So moved. Second. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. Uh, before we do our pledge, an announcement, please. Um, it saddens me to report that Jackie K. O'Brien passed away on Tuesday, November 19th. Jackie served her district, which included Anderson Township, for many years as our Ohio State representative. She continued the work her late husband, John O'Brien, had started as a state legislator. John was an Anderson Township trustee before heading to Columbus. As an avid traveler, she would often regale us with the stories of trips she shared with former Attorney General Betty Montgomery and former President of the Ohio House, Joanne Woodward. They were hilarious. She passed this love of travel on to her children and grandchildren. Jackie loved God, her family, her country, her state, and Anderson Township. She was a good friend to me, and I will miss her. Would you please remain standing after the Pledge of Allegiance so that we may honor her memory with a moment of silence. Thank you. I would, uh, we would be remiss if we didn't also uh, mention that we mourn the passing of uh, two other folks in our community this past week, uh, past several weeks. One is uh, Patty Fusaro, the uh, wife of Greg Fusaro, the chairman of our Economic Development Committee. The other being Fritz Turton, a good friend of the, of the developer and good, good friend of the township. So. Thank you. Uh, I will need a motion to adopt the, adopt the agenda, please. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the agenda. Now, there are, um, did Russ, we want to make a couple of changes on that? Um, we're just, no, we're, no, actually, we're just moving something forward. We're just moving it forward. Right. But uh, it still, uh, still remains uh, intact. It's just a mo moving, so. A movement of an yeah. item, mm -hmm. okay, to a, to a little farther in the meeting. Right. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the agenda. Second. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. The first item on that agenda <clears throat> is a public hearing. This is re, uh, regarding the ANCOR area land use plan update. So I will open the public meeting at this time. And um, who is presenting, Paul? You are? Oh, Allison. Allison Hudson. Good evening. Hi there. So our 2011 comprehensive plan directed us to take a closer look at the northern section of the township known as the ANCOR area. In April of 2012, you all selected a consultant for this project, Meisner and Associates, and we began our study in July of that year. Through a series of steering committee meetings, open houses, and focus groups, we came up with the plan that is before you this evening. And tonight we have Gary Meisner of Meisner and Associates here to make a presentation on this project. Thank you. Thanks, Allison. Um, Gary Meisner, planner, landscape architect, and uh, we've really enjoyed working with the steering committee and staff on this uh, exciting section of the township. Um, we had fun at the meetings, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, through a, a process, uh, we, uh, we not only looked back into the history of this area, which dates back to probably 100 BC with the Native American inhabitants. Uh, and we still have some remnants of their in, in habitation down there in the Angkor area. Through um, agricultural years and through um, the Air Nitrates Corporation uh, development that uh, was abandoned by the US government back in you know, early years. And of course, uh, more recently, uh, 
agriculture, surface uh, mining, and you know some growth and development, although not at its peak in this area. And uh, so we went back through the history and talked about this this process for uh, looking ahead based upon the broad recommendations of the uh, comprehensive plan adopted by the township in 2011 with a lot of public input. But one of the key recommendations of that plan was to take a more in-depth study of the Encore area, engage a more diverse uh, group of residents and property owners in addition to businesses to talk in more depth about you know their thoughts on and their vision on the future. So we did that and um, that was also based upon an earlier ANCOR plan done in 1994 that uh, laid some of these same principles out there. Um, the process as Allison mentioned included a series of steering committee meetings. We had eight or so of those meetings. We had two public open houses. We had um, some adjacent jurisdictional meetings to get their input, but also to kind of tell the story about what was going on with the project. Uh, we also met with some of the environmental groups to uh, see what their perspective and thoughts were. Um, the plan, which I guess I've got to use this little pointer um, or aim it over that away. The planning process, um, really revalidated and and was based upon a lot of the principles in the 2000 plan there on this sheet and I'm sure you've looked at that in previous meetings the plan itself uh, recommends a number of land use refinements to the 2011 comprehensive plan rather than read all of these I think I'll, I'll switch ahead here is the township wide uh, comprehensive plan and this is an enlargement of the northeast corner of the township, which shows a primarily um, an, an industrial uh, pink use with uh, the hillside surrounding in uh, housing of various kinds and a retail strip along uh, Round Bottom Road along with some parkland. It also shows a um, river conservation buffer zone along the river and of course there is parkland and some township uh, green space properties throughout. The updated plan um, is very much like that early comprehensive plan but what it said and what came out of a lot of the discussions was we need to be a little more flexible with land uses in certain areas and allow for transitional uses on the hillsides um, there was a lot of discussion about that. Out of that discussion, there was a strong um, desire to conserve the hillsides, you know, not just because of their beauty and their development limitations, but uh, because, uh, you know, those were value added to the properties on the hills and created their own sort of green space buffer between housing and commercial or industrial uses down in the valley. So the west or the east edge of the Encore uh, uh, area along Union Township, especially in the north section, has some transitional uses that allow for both light industry but also uh, <coughs> transitional uh, housing by the definition that's in the 2011 comp plan. Uh, the plan is, shows a number of cross-hatched green areas on the hillsides. Those don't follow property lines. Those are very much attentive to the actual slopes, the steeper slopes. And there is some work that needs to be done to clarify, you know, how those hillside conservation, um, the language would be carried through on a development by development process. But the general thought is that, that those areas be largely maintained as Greensward. Part of it is also there's, you know, there is a lot of runoff from the hillsides and so those staying in a, a sort of a verdant green condition will reduce some of the stormwater impacts down in the valley. 
part of the, uh, there, there's a comparison plan, and I'm not going to go through every single property, but what, excuse me, what uh, the comparison plan does show is that rather than retail along Round Bottom Road, that is now a general mixed use, which allows for a much more diverse uh, types of land uses. There is also um, a designation called the core industry area that's focused on the older industrial properties along uh, Broadwell. And the thought there is that those properties have some grandfathering with their uses, and they are a little heavier industry. And even though uh, the comp plan is showing this as uh, light industry, that those might still be maintained because of their grandfathering through time. Um, also, even though the, uh, the roadway improvements proposed as part of the Eastern Quarter project are not right within the Encore area, they're on the fringe, there was a lot of discussion about how they might best relate to improved access into Encore in the future. Uh, there was a great deal of emphasis on advancing the Encore connector road from 32 into Broadwell and the um, access plans that the, the steering committee discussed proposed three or so alignments, which have been, of course, studied in the past. But that, that was received a lot of discussion because it does reduce the potential for cut through traffic up Mount Carmel Road, provides an incentive and uh, improved utilities for stimulating growth and development within Ancor. Um, so, and those are shown on this final access plan. Uh, another access consideration uh, it grew out of the Eastern Corridor Plan, which of course still has many steps to go through, and that is the potential for transit-oriented development along the existing rail right-of-way path, several potential uh, passenger rail stations, oops, have been um, identified at Broadwell and perhaps at Mount Carmel and Round Bottom Road. Um, that's subject to, you know, more study with the Eastern Corridor Transportation Plan. But if those were to happen, that would also be a key stimulus to growth and development and, and really accessibility for the residents that live in the surrounding hillside areas to take advantage of, you know, a safe um, path downtown. Now, saying that the passenger rail elements of the plan are sort of out there, but long-range planning takes that into account. And, and should that happen, um, there was a new um, land use category created to cover how that might happen. It's called the Transportation-Oriented Development Mixed-Use Area. And that would allow for mixes of use in the area immediately surrounding the potential passenger rail station location. And it's consistent with a lot of planning that other transportation plans in other cities go through. It's, it's a really value-added um, piece of real estate whenever those stations are created. Of course, this is projecting ahead and not knowing whether or not that would happen. Um, another access improvement uh, thing that was discussed quite a bit was in enhancing the bikeway uh, access from the residences around down to Round Bottom Road and to potential recreational sites within um, the area, you know, especially the lakes or any green space that might happen and recreational uses that might happen there as well as the existing parks and play fields that exist around uh, along Round Bottom Road. And to that end, also talking about improvements to Round Bottom Road going east into Union Township, uh, which has a lot of cost implications, but certainly improving the safety for bikeways and the roadway corridor, while still maintaining the scenic views of the Little Miami River. So that's, that's kind of it in a, in a nutshell. Uh, a lot of work from the steering committee. I have to really compliment them for hanging in there. And they still, still have some concerns. You know, you never get 
a hundred percent of uh, of everybody saying yes, we love this all the way. But I think we've incorporated many of the the best ideas, and certainly because this is a comprehensive plan, not zoning, there will be additional discussions about you know how this might go forward, and of course development by development reviews that the staff and trustees will provide input on. Paul Drury. Uh, thank you. <laughs> that really concludes the formal presentation. I wanted to personally thank Gary and his staff. Allison have provided the lead staff on our end. Thank you to the steering team who provided numerous hours as well, not only attending meetings, but also providing their input on drafts. Um, and also all of our partnering agencies that have reviewed the plan and provided comments as well. So with that, do you have any questions for us? If not, we can open it up to the public. No questions? Uh, because it is a um, public hearing, uh, I will ask that anyone in the audience who wishes to step forward and speak on this plan or any elements thereof, either as a proponent or as an opponent, may do so at this time and address the board. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm uh, Chris Kearns. I was a member of the uh, steering committee, and I was one of the outliers, literally, in that I did not own property in the area. So um, I do want to uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to serve on the anchor steering committee. And I, I really felt that I had to sort of give the world view um, of how it would affect other people outside the township. Um, what I've said about Anderson in the past uh, is, you know, our strength is its family-friendly Forest Hills. And I think I carried that to the, the steering committee. Um, and if you look at what we looked at, um, in Cleveland, they like to talk about the emerald necklace, where you have the emerald plus the sapphire, because you have the, the river and the, uh, the lakes, as well as the, uh, the forested hillside. Um, I think we were unified in our vision. Um, just a, a quick anecdote that uh, some people with a, a little memory might appreciate is I was sitting at a table across from Steve Raffensperger, um, Martin Marietta, and at one point he looked at me and said, that's exactly what we were thinking. Um, so yes, we did agree on some things. Um, and I think the vision was clear that we wanted to take advantage of the opportunity to develop that area in a way that builds the economic base because if we're supporting our schools and supporting our parks then we're supporting family-friendly forest hills um, what we disagree with is what we ended up with the map so the map has a lot of hash marks which means a lot of uncertainty and we acknowledge that some of that was out of our control um, certainly the the ongoing lawsuit the eastern corridor is now stopped for at least a year and a half uh, because of Federal Highway Administration intervention um, and a conflict resolution process that was just announced within the last week. Um, that does not mean that we have to sit still waiting for these things to unfold. So I think one of the things we talked about at the end was the opportunity to move forward by having an implement, implementation team and a coordination team. There were opportunities that we talked about in generalities about attracting education, medical, government. NIOSH is going to build a big new lab. Why are they only looking at Claremont County and not Anderson? There's a way that we can pool our resources to recruit. Talk, think about the IT incubators. Those people grow up and go somewhere. Why can't we bring those businesses here? So those are the ideas we tossed about, but it's going to take a coordinated effort to make it happen. At that point, the hash marks go away and the vision emerges. I think that's a critical step that you have to think about moving forward. So again, I thank you for the opportunity and happy to provide <coughs> additional feedback. Uh, but we can make this work and, and I think we can be in agreement. We want it to work. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, thank you very much for your service on, on this important committee. Um, does anyone else wish to address the board? Hi. Hi. I'm Kathy Berger. I also was on the ANCOR steering committee, uh, and I am a long-term or long-time resident, 29 years in the ANCOR area. And I wanted to thank you for the opportunity to serve on that committee. Um, the one thing that I did want to mention is that at the present time, there's like a third of the property in the Encore area that is now up for sale. And with that being said, that actually can give 
Anderson an opportunity to try to pull in these other businesses that may be able to create jobs and stimulate the economic development in the area. Um, I want to thank Gary for um, being um, so uh, equal in his meetings. He tried to give both sides all the opportunities they could to, um, to speak, and, and I, just, I just wanted to thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. And thank you for your service um, on this important committee. Does anyone else wish to address the board on this matter? Seeing no one else step forward, I will close the public hearing. And uh, at the pleasure of my colleagues, do we want to move forward on a resolution? Sure. I'd, I'd just like to make uh, one comment, if I may. And this was a, this was a tough one. Uh, probably the toughest one we've ever been involved in in, in Anderson because we had such a, a diversity of, uh, of people and needs and wants and we had something out there that nobody knew what was going and still don't know what's going to happen right. so I commend you all for being able to come up with a plan that can adapt to whatever happens and then we go from there so you know, again it's a starting point and plans can be changed but if you don't have a basic starting point uh, you don't have a you don't have a hope so thank you very much well everyone on the committee for your service and Gary thank you. <laughs> yes and Gary thank you yes ma'am patience of job right <laughs> I'd like to make a few comments ma'am um, as a trustee liaison for this committee I was very impressed with the members that uh, volunteered to be part of this it was a very diverse group um, property owners homeowners down there, business owners, people from outside of the area. Um, the potential there was to have something that, that would not come up with a plan like this. The plan is very comprehensive, and I think there's a level of agreement here that was um, very commendable for the folks that, that participated in it. Um, this truly is, in my opinion, can be the very much the future of Anderson if it's done properly, if it's done correctly, and that's with further cooperation moving forward. Uh, the pro potential here for for jobs can be in the thousands the potential for infrastructure and economic activity can be hundreds of millions of dollars um, we are looking at at truly a a very important part of anderson in the future and i would encourage all parties to to kind of strive for with that in mind thank you ma'am you're welcome with that i would like to uh move that we adopt a resolution of the Board of Township Trustees adopting the Angkor Area Plan update as presented before us. Second. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. Thank you. Thank Paul. you. Thank you all too for that was the easy part. supporting the planning process. Thank you. Our pleasure. Okay. We'll move forward um, to a legislative update. Our state representative, Peter Stoutberg, is with us this evening. Thank you, Mrs. Rice, and good evening, everyone. It's great to be back before you. Um, as far as updates, we are busy. Uh, we were up there quite late yesterday, and that seems to be the uh, rule rather than the exception lately. Uh, first off, we have our annexation Bill 277, I know that's on your talking points for later, so I won't get into that very much, but thank you for coming up and testifying. And I believe that we are up again uh, for more testimony after we get back from Thanksgiving for that, so. Is the date December 3rd, do you know? The, yes, yes, I oh. believe that's right. Have you, have you heard from Commissioner Todd Portoon? No, I have not. Um, he indicated to me at last week at the OKI meeting that I gave him a copy of my testimony and the um, legislative um, summary of the bill. And this is very much a topic for him, um, one he supports wholeheartedly. And so um, he promised that he would contact you and that either he would come up to Columbus to give proponent testimony or he would write a letter. Okay. So you may be hearing from him. Thank you. Well, I, I can reach out to him as well. Good. Um, on other matters, we had passing out of the House um, 
uh, yesterday, and it actually would, would complete its journey through the General Assembly, Senate Joint Law Resolution 5, which is Ohio's uh, step in applying to Congress to uh, call a constitutional convention strictly for the purpose of re uh, rolling out a balanced budget amendment. Uh, this has been going on for a little bit of time. We are the 20th state to do this. Basically, the Constitution says that Congress can call uh, a convention, which is a general convention, or the states can apply for a, uh, that a specific amendment be considered. Um, not without controversy, but it is bipartisan uh, to a certain extent in nature because everybody's a little bit fed up with the spending in Washington and the inability to, to have a balanced budget over many, many years. Um, so that's what we did yesterday early on, and it's a Senate joint resolution, so that uh, would complete it. Uh, we need 34 states altogether, so it's got a little ways to go. A House Bill 5 got out of the House last week. That's our municipal uh, income tax uniformity bill. It doesn't impact you from a governmental standpoint, but I think it impacts our citizens and our businesses, um, and it, it hopefully will be helpful. The goal is to make, you know, where there's multi-jurisdictions uh, trying to get income tax for people working in a municipality, um, it creates a burden on the businesses. So the goal is to make it uniform in how, we, um, how a municipality can treat them, and that should be a, a, an economic driver for Ohio. And that goes to the Senate. Uh, yesterday, we passed out of the House, uh, House Bill 203, which is a revision to some of the gun laws. Um, very controversial. Uh, it goes over to the Senate. The, the big part about that is we eliminated the duty to retreat. Um, and I believe the way we did is was we went into the section of the law that was the Castle Doctrine, basically and um, change that a little bit. And it is not a stand your ground bill. That was the, the flash point that everybody said, well, we're like Florida now. It's, it's, it's um, you know, what happened down there? And it's not. It's not the same law that Florida has. It merely revises Ohio law. So it takes away the duty to retreat in using self-defense. And that goes over to the Senate. Um, Something we'll be keeping an eye on, and I was talking to Ms. Serhart about this earlier, is uh, a, a House Bill 289, uh, which has to do with revising the way JEDs, a, a JED and JED Z, it's tough to do, um, uh, are structured. And um, uh, the genesis of that is, is there are bad actors out there in, in some uh, places around the state where abusing the right to create a JED zone or JED district and not using the funds uh, in an appropriate manner, uh, which is economic development purposes or infrastructure, and instead we're using it for operating expenses, I guess. And as I like to say, bad actors will get you um, a, a reaction. Um, so I, I don't think it's good for the township. I don't think it's good for townships in general. Um, and uh, you know we'll be watching it very closely and working with uh, Representative Shuring introduced it, and he was the one who created Jed's way way long ago. So, with that, I'd be happy to answer uh, any questions. Uh, thank you for the remarks of uh, regarding um, Mrs. O'Brien. When I let the speaker know, he recalled her very fondly, as he has in the past, and did also recollect that he was, she was very good friends with Speaker Davidson and um, yes. well liked in Columbus. So. Thank you for those kind words. You're welcome. Any questions of our representative? You had mentioned, uh, Peter, you mentioned Jeds and Jeds. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty clear that while the, the motivation is supposedly economic development, the real problem is uh, it's just creating a whole new way for townships that don't have, because townships do not and are not permitted by the statute to, uh, uh, to have payroll tax. Uh, it would simplify the whole thing is to allow the local entity to uh, implement it. It's kind of silly that a community has to pay another community part of the tax that's collected so they can get some money. It's, uh, to me, uh, uh, very uncomfortable with that, with that concept. And I agree with you. I don't see that, that bill going uh, the way it is right now going anywhere. But there was one issue that goes back, and I can't remember if it was originally part of that bill, was 
to, to be able to penalize companies who made promises regarding X number of employees and then created the amount of dollars that the community was giving to that company uh, and then all of a sudden found out instead of 500 people, they only hired 200 people. How is that, uh, how is that working? Did that get... Yeah, I would have to, I remember that discussion taking place, the clawback rule is what we call it. Um, and I'm not sure if that is something, I, I have not seen legislation on it, and I'm not sure if that is something that certainly is probably written into agreements with the, the companies when we make an economic development deal. <clears throat> Excuse me, it would be my assumption that that would be more of an administrative um, power and, and function that they would have the agreement saying, hey, you didn't, you didn't meet up your obligations. So, but I can look into that and get back to you. And I don't, your, your, your point on involving the municipalities in the collection is, is well taken. Um, Saks Fifth Avenue is uh, going two years from your heart. move from downtown Cincinnati to, uh, uh, to the uh, Kenwood Town Center. And they were so all elated than the fact that they were going to get a 2.25% 2, 2 raise because they weren't going to have to pay uh, payroll tax anymore. And I had to disappoint them to tell them <laughs> that they just passed yeah. the JED, that are JEDs, that uh, put a tax in place in that location. So it's just all game playing. It's terrible. Sycamore Townships, very pleased. Yeah, Sycamore Township, yes. Yeah. Anything else? No, ma'am. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Happy you Thanksgiving. Very much. Thank you. Uh, we've come to uh, the portion of our agenda, we, which we call public forum. And uh, what that means is that anyone in the audience who wishes to step forward and speak to this board on any matter may do so at this time. We do ask that you uh, state your name and ad address for the record and that you keep your comments brief and concise and to five minutes or less. Having said that, anyone who wishes to address us may do so. Good evening. My name is Ruth Hardy, 7757 Anderson Oaks Drive. I'm commenting on the um, potential aggregation plan, and I wanted to commend Ms. Parker for the thoughtful approach that she's taken in troubleshooting the benefits and pitfalls inherent in an aggregation deal that can potentially save residents on their energy bill, but that might create future problems for the township as a whole, as well as for individual com consumers. I'm also very pleased that you're continuing to keep renewable energy on the table as a possible option. In evaluating the value and costs of the various suppliers' plans, we, that is, the township residents and decision makers, need to be sure that, one, we factored in the external costs that come with fossil fuels, and two, that we don't increase consumption as a result of lower prices. I'll go back to number one, the external costs. Well, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the part that carbon and methane, greenhouse gases, play in climate disasters. A good example recently was Hurricane Sandy. The costs were about 60 plus billion to remediate. The projected cost to protect New York and New Jersey shorelines in the tens of billions, which will be temporary as sea levels continue to rise. The cost to Verizon, one billion to switch from copper to fiber optic, five billion for subways, nine tunnels impacted years of work ahead to repair. Number two, going back to what I mean by increasing consumption as a result of lower prices. Our promotion of the chosen plan should contain a dual message. Save money on energy through aggravation, aggregation and save money on energy through energy efficiency and conservation. We could call for citizen input to propose ways we can reach out to encourage energy efficiency and conservation. For example, maybe a township-wide educational thrust and promotion on energy efficiency audits. Like in World War II, when citizens worked together to reduce consumption of resources that were needed for the war effort. 
I skipped over um, some more costs of external cost. I forgot to mention with regard to climate disasters, preparedness, adaptation, health impacts, loss of livelihoods, loss of homes, costs of transition, and economic uncertainty. And finally, just a few comments about high volume hydrofracking. We just have to remember that natural gas is a fossil fuel. It's not renewable. It poses grave risks to our water, air, wildlife, and climate. It emits methane, a highly potent greenhouse gas, which is 70 to 100, 100 times more efficient at trapping heat in the atmosphere than is CO2. High volume hydrofracking opens up new areas to industrialization and fossil fuel development at a time we urgently need to transition to clean renewable energy. And hydrofracking for natural gas and oil is exempt from the major provisions of several, seven federal statutes that protect air, water, and soil. So the entire production process, transportation, storage, and disposal are lacking in adequate regulation and oversight. And even the state regulations vary from state to state, are sketchy, sketchy and don't protect us from certain health hazards. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Does anyone else wish to address the board? Seeing no one step forward, we will move uh, forward to trustee comments. Um, I know I have a few to make. I believe Mr. Jackson does as well. Uh, I have no comments, ma'am. Oh, all right. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, I will, um, I'll start, uh, if you might, don't mind, no, because please, please. we would, uh, Representative Stoutberg was speaking before about House uh, Bill 277. Um, townships in Ohio and the Ohio Township Association has been fighting for many, many years to give us an even playing field um, uh, and a voice and a vote at the table. And that's really what this bill is all about. Um, I think uh, I, I went up be because I thought it was important for the legislators to hear a proponent testimony and to appeal to them on many levels uh, exactly what our position is. So with your indulgence, I will read that testimony so that you have a clearer understanding of uh, that particular bill and its importance. This is House Bill 277. Uh, my proponent testimony before the House State and Local Government Committee, November 12, 2013. Good afternoon, uh, Chairman Blair, Vice Chair Alienski, uh, Ranking Member Clyde, and honorable members of the committee. My name is Peggy Rice, and I serve as president of the Anderson Township Board of Township Trustees. Thank you for allowing me to present proponent testimony on House Bill 277. Anderson Township is an urban community of approximately 45,000 residents located in Hamon County in southwest Ohio. The township is bounded by the Ohio River to its south and the city of Cincinnati to the west with several villages and townships comprising the remaining borders. In addition, the township completely surrounds the village of Newtown, a community of 2,600. We appreciate the legislature's passage of House Bill 50 during the last General Assembly, which eliminated some of the income tax revenue incentives surrounding annexation. However, unfortunately, this taxation is not always the underlying reason for annexation. In January 2012, Anderson faced the first of three Type II annexation attempts by a contiguous village. <clears throat> Excuse me. The village attempted to use 220 acres of publicly owned parkland to try to annex territory to benefit a private property owner whose land comprised of less than five acres. The property owner's goal was to annex to the village to avoid county zoning regulations, and that is an abuse of the legislative intent of expedited annexation. 
No additional service services would have been gained by the property owner seeking annexation, as Cincinnati Water Works and the Metropolitan Sewer District provide water and sewer services in southwest Ohio. Furthermore, the permissive zoning in the annexing village could have been disastrous for surrounding property owners. For the last 24 years, I've had the pleasure of serving Anderson Township residents. During my tenure, I was instrumental in obtaining permissive legislation to place a green space levy on the ballot. As a result, Anderson Township became the first, Ohio first township in Ohio with a voter-approved green space program. To date, the community has protected more than 700 acres of property that by law will remain in its natural state. This in addition to the 500 acres of parkland owned by Anderson Township Park District. The protection of the investments that Anderson Township taxpayers have made in green space, trails, parks, and various other publicly owned properties are what bring me before you today. While no annexation proceedings is imminent or pending at this time, I am here to employ you to give all political subdivisions a voice and a vote in annexations involving land owned by the taxpayers. Providing this voice will ensure that the 3.8 million citizens who live in Ohio's 1,308 townships have the same rights as private property owners. I understand that providing this right will apply only to publicly owned land and not public rights of way. And that just, I'll just interject that that's an important point because we may never get to that point and that's okay. I understand why if they want to go up through a public roadway and annex, this, this law would not cover that. <coughs> a main tenet of our national and state constitutions is the right to own property, the right to acquire and hold a freehold estate in land. A battle cry in our American Revolution was taxation without representation. What this ch with this, without this change in law, recognizing taxpayers' ownership, it is indeed annexation without representation. A voice in the process is all the people ask. It is important that political subdivisions, or more to the point, the citizens and taxpayers who own public land be deemed owners giving them a voice in type two expedited annexation. I appreciate this opportunity to address this honorable committee. So thank you for listening to all that. I just wanted to make the point of its importance and let's hope it works. Thank you. I want to uh, thank Mrs. Rice for her diligence in uh, this anti-annexation effort and forego uh, any trustee comments by moving forward something that uh, uh, coming out of our exec session that's uh, pretty exciting. And I'm going to ask Mrs. Uh, Earhart to uh, lead it off if she would. Thank you. I'm pleased to bring this before the board this evening. Um, in 1994, the board captured gains in tax revenues from increased property values that uh, increased as a result from infrastructure improvements. These TIF dollars, tax increment financing dollars, are used for public improvements, capital improvements such as repair of roadway, purchase of land, uh, purchase of equipment. Monies from the 1994 TIF can also be utilized to further economic development by providing for demolition of properties, structures on private properties. Uh, such was the case many years ago when this board voted to utilize 1994 TIF dollars for the partial demolition of the former Beachmont Mall resulting in the uh, facility that you see today, the Anderson Town Center. The proposed agreement before the board this evening would do a similar action. It would authorize the use of 1994 TIF dollars to fund former dem fund demolition of the former River Downs racetrack and grandstand facility. Uh, this would facilitate the development of Belterra Park, which is proposed being worked on by Pinnacle Entertainment, PNK. Uh, the investment 
will provide a tremendous amount of economic development, uh, economic benefits to the township and the impacted school district. Pinnacle proposes approximately a $300 million investment in the township uh, and the creation of approximately 700 jobs. Under the terms of the agreement before the board, uh, in exchange for the demolition dollars, the township would receive a 20-year non-annexation agreement where Pinnacle would not seek annexation to any municipal corporation for 20 years. So the resolution is before the board for your consideration. We also have several rev representatives from Pinnacle in the audience if the board has any questions. Thank you. With that. Yeah. I would uh, first like to introduce a resolution approving a cooperative agreement with PNK Ohio LLC as uh, outlined by Mrs. Earhart. Second. Mr. O'Brien. We might have some discussion. Your discussion. Thank you. Uh, I think there's no question that the uh, uh, investment that uh, Pinnacle is making will inure to the long-term benefit of all the property owners along um, uh, along the Anderson Southern border, and I think uh, in the long range it will definitely inure to the benefit of everyone who who lives in this community. So um, this. Uh, effort the, uh, so that you understand motivation here is that it would not have been uh, in the best interest of our taxpayers to provide any business with these kind of funds without some assurance that they wouldn't be moved to some other community in a short period of time. And as uh, Mrs. Rice outlined until such time as they change and modify the law, it is a fear that, that we uh, that we have and we have to be very careful with it. Ninety some percent, I, I don't remember the, uh, the, the final number, but ninety some percent of all the residents of Anderson Township did not pay a single solitary penny into the TIF fund. Uh, the only people who actually have uh, paid any money, uh, residents, uh, residential uh, property tax into the fund are those in a few subdivisions that were built uh, after 1994 that were originally designated under the program. So 90-some um, percent of all the money came from uh, businesses and enhancement of the, the value of the property, and that's what TIF is all about that uh, you reinvest the money that you generate back into the community to enhance property values. And that's what really drives this, this whole community. So um, with that, uh, I think it's a, a great start. These people are going to be, have always been um, the former company since 1925, been great corporate citizens. And uh, the Pinnacle folks uh, have uh, proven that uh, we're going to see more of the same. And that's, that's a good thing for everybody. Thank you, Russ. Do we have uh, anyone else who wishes to comment on this? No. Yeah, I'd like to make a quick comment here. Um, I suspect we'll approve the agreement if it's approved. Um, this is a very wonderful uh, cooperative agreement between the township and a welcome new addition to our business community. I think 20 years shows the commitment that both parties are making to this, and uh, it's going to be, I suspect, um, a very promising, very, um, very wonderful addition to our community, and I'm looking forward to uh, being able to visit your facility. Thank you. Thank you. Fiscal officer, officer the Mr. roll, please. Mr. Bryan. Yes. Mr. Jackson. Yes. Ms. Rice. Yes. Thank you. Well, that's all good news, and I, I think a media release will be out there shortly. So Yes, ma'am. We have a release well available for, for any of the press that would like a copy. So others will hear our good news. <clears throat> uh, next on the agenda is our fiscal officer, Mr. Kenneth Dietz. Ken, what do you have for us this evening, please? Thank you. Uh, the end of the, uh, end of the month October reports are in. The expenditures are less than uh, what we had budgeted, which is good news. Revenues are slightly higher than what uh, our revenue projections were going to were. 
so hopefully we can hold on for the next two months. And um, they're here for your viewing pleasure. The, uh, since it's November and we're at the end of the year, we do have some appropriation changes. Uh, three of them are rather minor. Uh, the fourth is significant, and I will explain what happened on that one. But in the lighting districts, we've never uh, had to ask for uh, appropriation changes, but we have two different line items where we need additional $12,000 in contracts. Uh, we can take that from miscellaneous expenses, which we have some uh, extra money in. In the Sheriff's Department, uh, we're asking for $8,000 just to make sure we get through the end of the year for fuel. Uh, taking that from other expenses. In Public Works, Medicare, uh, we're asking for $5,000 additional, taking that from other expenses. I don't think it's going to be that much, but we don't want to have to come back to the board in December uh, for additional monies. Uh, we have paid the fire and rescue uh, retirement monies uh, for the last quarter of 2012 and the first three quarters of this year. Uh, They've always built, we've always been paying our bills one quarter behind. Uh, recently, we've been informed that they would, they would require us to pay monthly. So we are going to have to pay for October and November of this year. We won't have to pay for December because we'll pay that in January. But the normal monthly amount is a little bit over $100,000. So we have two months of payments that are due, and there's no way we can... <coughs> say we're not going to pay them because it looks to me like they might have a cash flow problem or something, but they're trying to catch up. So we need $210,000 uh, in that line item, employment, employer, employer retirement contribution. We have several different areas that we're taking the money from, including uh, insurance and salaries. Uh, hopefully, uh, that will cover us for the next two months. I'm, I'm pretty sure we did the calculations properly, but it's one of those things that they've changed the ball game in the middle of the year, mm -hmm. and we are not incre increasing any of the funds, so we don't have to go to the county auditor and ask permission. Uh, we don't have to get a, an amended certificate or anything, so. Good. I would need your approval on those items. Okay. I would uh, move that we uh, adopt the appropriation changes all within the same fund as uh, detailed by our fiscal officer. Second. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Right. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. You might mention, if I may, how many line items do we have, Debbie? Oh, well, in what fund? This report. Oh. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000? No, 3,000 lines. Maybe 1,000. 1,000? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, what we're doing here is we're not spending more money. We are moving money into another category within the same uh, classification, and we're not going to spend it where we originally thought we were going to have to spend it. So, good. And e even with that change, we're below budget in the Fire and Rescue Department. Thank you. Which we intend to keep that way. Thank you. Our law director is ne next, uh, Mrs. Margaret Comey. Thank good you. evening. Maybe. You have three resolutions before you in your packet that represent um, next steps in development and connection with the Ohio Riverfront plan, in essence. The resolutions all deal with the Belterra Park property that's being developed by Pinnacle. Um, having received the necessary approval documentation from the Cincinnati City School District, in which the main parcel um, is located, the board can now proceed to create a standalone TIF Area 1 along the river. Um, that uh, Ohio Riverfront TIF Area 1 will be a 30-year, 100% TIF. To do this, to accomplish that, um, you must first remove that parcel of land, auditor's parcel 500-04-6027, from the township's TIF that was created in 1994. So the first resolution that you have accomplishes that, the removal of the parcel from 94. And the second resolution would then create 
Ohio Riverfront TIF Area 1 as a 30-year 100% TIF. Um, and that would really constitute then, that parcel would constitute a standalone commercial TIF. Um, while the, the value of the improvements to the land would be exempt from real property taxes, um, under the TIF uh, legislation, um, the property owner will still pay what we call pilots, payments in lieu of taxes, um, to the political subdivisions. Um, but those dollars then are used to make capital expenditures um, to fund public infrastructure improvements that the township would undertake that will benefit that property and further development of that land. So it's a means of financing public infrastructure to encourage development. Um, so resolution number two accomplishes the creation of that TIF. I want to add that the schools, um, in this case, the resolution tonight deals with a parcel that's in the Cincinnati City School District. At your last meeting, you dealt with a parcel, two parcels that were located in the um, Forest Hills School District. Um, as you all directed, as staff was working through the uh, proceedings to accomplish this end, we work closely with the schools and the legislation does make the school districts whole. In other words, they, they share in the pilot payments that will come in from this development. And um, that leads me to resolution three, which um, would approve a revenue sharing agreement with the Cincinnati City School District, um, and it would authorize the township administrator to execute that revenue sharing agreement on your behalf. And that revenue sharing agreement provides that um, you will, uh, that the school district will receive 100% of the service payments in lieu of taxes with respect to the development of the property in the TIF that it otherwise would have received um, had that property not been exempt. So um, you're moving together in lockstep with the school districts, and it's very exciting to be able to take these next steps to fund public infrastructure. That's it. Thank Do you have you. any questions? Yes. With that, uh, I would move that uh, we adopt a resolution removing one parcel of real estate from operation of resolution number 94-0628-04. Second. I do have a uh, Thank you. discussion. Uh, Margaret, the original TIF in 1994, mm. that was a 30-year TIF. Is mm -hmm. that correct? That's right. So it was due to expire in 2024, which is basically 10 years and a few months away. That's correct. And when a TIF expires, mm -hmm. I think Mr. Jackson put this eloquently a few months ago, is the property owner still pays their property taxes, but those monies rather than being earmarked for just Anderson Township, go into the general fund at Hamilton County, and they can be spent in other places outside of the township, maybe go to another the western side of the county. But with a... Mm. They, get, they get distributed just like... Uh, if Real if the, property if taxes. Tax, well, they go to the county, they go to the schools, they go to the township. Mm -hmm. but, but not necessarily... Once a TIF expires, um, then the money can be distributed anywhere throughout the whole county. When the TIF expires, um, the payments in lieu of taxes are no longer made. Right. And that property value that had been exempt from real property taxes then goes back on the real property tax rolls. Mm -hmm. And the uh, real property taxes are collected as they otherwise would have been had there never been a TIF. And they are uh, divided up in the same way. So rather than uh, collecting payments in lieu of taxes, which, by the way, you have to use for capital expenditures, you can't, in most cases, use them for any operating costs, um, that whole mechanism goes away, and it's as if you uh, are under the uh, real property taxation statutes. But what I guess, in essence, what happens is in a, within a TIF environment, the money paid stays within the community, within Anderson Township, but in a non-TIF, it, it can be distributed throughout the entire county. And this is a... Mm, yeah. 
I guess. In general. Okay. In general. Well, this so, is some of it comes back to the township some like it normally does. would. Some of it goes to the schools like it normally would. Right. But the county keeps their portion, which is 25% approximately. Uh, park district gets some and uh, right. it's just, it's divided up the way it would Div normally be. But right. this, what we're doing here, that we're extending this out another 20 years where the money has a better chance of staying within the township rather than being distributed yeah that, uh, that's the true with county. regard to the parcels in these two new Ohio Riverfront tips that, yes. that's right um, and the the statutes are uh, the legislative intent behind the TIF statutes is that it is to encourage economic development bring jobs etc well, yeah. I would feel much you become the board the po political subdivision becomes really um, um, a partner in development with the private enterprise. You want to incentivize economic development. Well, I feel much more comfortable about being, being able to make a decision about how we spend the money that's within the township rather than having to go through downtown, so to speak. So. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any further um, discussion before we vote on this resolution? Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. The, uh, the second uh, resolution, which is the one that's being referenced here, is uh, I would move that we adopt a resolution creating a TIFT area pursuant to Section 5709.73b of the Ohio Revised Code, declaring the improvement of the parcel of real estate located within the TIF area to be a public purpose, exempting from real estate taxation 100% of that improvement, requiring the owners of the parcel to make service payments in lieu of taxes, providing for the distribution of the applicable portion of those service payments to the Cincinnati Public Schools, establishing a township public improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of the remainder of those service payments, specifying the public infrastructure improvements to be made within the TIF area area that directly benefit the parcel and approving and authorizing the execution of a service agreement with respect to the TIF area. Second. Any dis further discussion? Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. And then the uh, third resolution. Uh, I would move that we adopt a resolution approving the revenue sharing agreement with the Cincinnati City School District with respect to Ohio Riverfront TIF 1. Second. Discussion? Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, planning and zoning, we've taken care of business as far as you're concerned? Okay, good. Thank you. Sheriff's Department, Lieutenant Guy. Good evening. <clears throat> I have just two real quick items um, for the board. Um, first is a liquor license request for BWR, Beachmont LLC, doing business as Buffalo Wings and Rings and Patio. It's located at 8517 Beachmont Avenue. Um, the Sheriff's Office has no objections to this renewal. That was the, uh, the BWR? Yes. yes. Right. They were in a different order here. Oh. I would move that we not object to a liquor license request for BWR Beachmont LLC DBA Buffalo Wings and Rings and Patio located at 8517 Beachmont Avenue. Second. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. The second item I have is another liquor license request. It's for um, Anand Petroleum Incorporated doing business as Beachmont BP, located at 7380 Beachmont Avenue and gas pumps. Um, we also have no objection to this location as well. I would move that we not object to a liquor license transfer request for AN Petroleum Inc. DBA Beachmont BP located at 7380 Beachmont Avenue. Second. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. And unless the board has anything else, that's all from our, our department this month. Thank you. Nice work. Yep. Public Works. Mr. Richard Shelley. Good evening. Good evening. I have uh, three items, uh, both routine and seasonal related, uh, before the board tonight. But the first one is the acceptance of the uh, salt bids that we team up with Hamilton County 
uh, as I have described before, there, there are sometimes benefits and sometimes not so much benefits, but uh, for us it seems to have worked out very well to bid in bulk with SALT. So what we do is we team up with Hamilton County and four or five other communities and bid a larger quantity. While those prices fluctuate because we don't all get it delivered to the same location, the uh, buying in bulk, if you will, has an effect on the bid price. So uh, I am very pleased to report this year uh, we have seen a dramatic decrease in the price of salt. That's because the last two winters have been so mild that there's probably an extra pile of this stuff laying around. Uh, it's not that they like us more this year than they have in the past. But uh, if, if this winter is as bad as they say, maybe we'll catch back up the following year. But as we look ahead, uh, as the board, I'll remind the board that before we had paid 68.86 for salt, this year we're looking at a price for 45.73 per ton delivered, which is a dramatic decrease in the price. So hopefully, if we do need a lot of it, we'll utilize that uh, savings. <laughs> is the salt dome uh, fairly filled with salt at this point? Yes, we're full. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you're going to have to um, store this off-site? And, and we won't take delivery until we need it. Oh, I see. As we deplete down, then we call and it gets delivered as, oh, I, as needed. I understood. Okay. I would move that we authorize the township administrator to enter into a contract with North American Salt Company for the purchase of road de-icing salt at $45.73 per ton delivered. Second. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Mr. Jackson. Yes. Ms. Rice. Yes. The second uh, item is the uh, annual resolution declaring uh, emergency for snow removal on unaccepted roads. Uh, I will remind uh, everyone that in a subdivision that has not been completed and has not passed through the county uh, subdivision process, accepted, maintenance bonds in place, it is still technically a private road until it becomes public. However, there are residents there, they live there, uh, the chief or, or the, the sheriff's office may have services that need to go back onto those roadways. So if the snow accumulates on these roadways, this gives public forces the permission to enter onto private property, if you will, to clear the pathways for emergency purposes. And what you have before you is the resolution that allows that, and it comes up every year to me, and uh, I think we've done it once in my 10 years here. <laughs> Used to come up every month and change the law. Yeah. It was, it was right. monthly. Oh, that was a pain. Oh, it was right? awful. Uh, yeah. about, Richard, about how many miles of roadway are going to be covered with this? Uh, these, feet, would be, really? these would be any subdivision that is not dedicated up to this point. Right. Um, it could cover as much as six or seven miles. Okay. So currently. Then, mm -hmm. and, and currently we're taking care of what 120 miles of roadway yeah just slightly over 120 yes okay thank you mm -hmm. I would move that we adopt a resolution declaring an emergency for snow removal on unaccepted roads second mr. O'Brien yes mr. Jackson yes Ms. rice yes thank you and as a part of that resolution if we do use our services we're able to bill the subdivision uh, the developer against those services so uh, it, it is a way for us uh, we don't pay for that uh, firsthand. Well, let's hope you don't have to use either one Let, of those. Let's hope we don't need to do either one. Okay. The, the last item before the board is also a uh, seasonal item, but as the board is aware, in the last couple of years through attrition, we have lost a couple positions in the road maintenance department. However, we're not able to attrition out their need uh, or their service, and so we need some extra help to get through the winter uh, to help us in the snow plows and to help us with the uh, winter operations. Um, Typically, we bring on two or three employees uh, for a two or three month span. They'll start uh, probably mid-December, uh, go through uh, till the end of February, and then uh, we will release that, that's those staff members and uh, those temporary workers can go on about other things. But it enables us to get through the winter. I would move that we adopt a resolution uh, in an amount not to exceed $25,000 from the Road and Bridge Fund for seasonal temporary employees for the Public Works Department from January 1, 2014 through December 31, 2014. Second. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Mr. Jackson. Yes. Ms. Rice. Yes. Okay, Richard, these seasonal workers, I mean, they have requirements that you, they have minimum standards that you look for? Under the conditions of the bargaining unit agreement, right. they must be paid as a CDL driver uh, in the bargaining unit, but they do not receive any other benefits. Okay. Very mm -hmm. good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Fire and Rescue Department is next. Chief Ober. That's good work. Thank you. <laughs> Township Administration. Vicki Earhart, Steve Sievers, and Suzanne Parker. Yes, Mr. Sievers is first up this evening. Good evening. Um, one of the end of year items that we take a lot of enjoyment in is the appointments to citizen committees. We uh, rely on nine citizen committees to help us with a variety of different activities in the community, and those do not include advisory or ad hoc committees such as the ANCOR Area Planning Committee that we heard from uh, earlier this evening and the contributions that they have. These are standing committees that serve as they advise the board on a variety of topics, and um, we take great pleasure with requesting solicitation of, of new interest for those committees. Uh, we do that in a variety of manners. Uh, the website, for example, Anderson Insights, our fall edition had an article. We've also had articles in the Forest Hills Journal and other sources to solicit interest, as well as the interest of those committee members who continue, who wish to continue serving for the year to come. Um, before you this evening, I have a proposed motion uh, for appointments to eight of those nine citizen committees. Um, basically, uh, five of those are uh, advisory in nature, non-statutory committees that this board has set up to uh, facilitate public involvement in the decision-making process. The other two are statutory committees related to zoning. Um, if the board is interested, I would like to entertain those separately. Uh, there are three different motions. Uh, the first two apply to those statutory committees. And um, uh, if there's any questions, we can take those as we go. But the first is for the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, the request is to appoint Brian Johnson. Uh, reappoint Brian Johnson to a five-year term on the Anderson Township Board of Zoning Appeals to expire December 31st, 2018. Again, there's five members on that board, each of which serve a five-year term on a rotating basis. We also recommend that with that, Jeannie Bechtold be appointed as the first alternate and Brian Sanders as the second alternate for 2014. Again, our alternates serve one-year terms. Okay, Steve, uh, it's been a thought of this board in the past that people these five-year terms, they serve a two five-year terms, and then there's, there's emphasis to maybe having those people take a break. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that still the, it's, I know it's not cast in stone, but that's still kind of the thought. It process. certainly is. Actually, Brian Johnson, I believe, was appointed uh, earlier this year, or maybe at the end of last year was the appointment. He filled an, um, an, an expired term. Right. Uh, so he basically has just served one year. Um, this would be the next five years, and presumably uh, we would uh, could entertain another five years after that. But generally, we try to speak uh, stay to two uh, five-year terms. Okay, very good. Thank you. I would make a motion that we reappoint Brian Johnson to a five-year term on the Anderson Township Board of Zoning Appeals to expire December 31, 2018. And Jeannie Bechtold is the number one alternate and Brian Sanders is the number two alternate to the Anderson Township Board of Zoning Appeals for 2014. Second. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. Thank you. The second motion pertains to the Anderson Township Zoning Commission. It's staff's recommendation to appoint Jonathan Gothard to a five-year term to expire December 31st, 2018. I believe Jonathan is the individual who was appointed earlier this year. He was an alternate for the first time appointed last December. Um, with that, we recommend that Christine Cook be appointed as the first alternate and Jay Lewis as the second alternate to the Zoning Commission for 2014. Again, Christine is just finishing up her first year as an alternate and Jay uh, his first six months as an alternate. So it would uh, allow that continuity to continue. I would make a motion to reappoint Jonathan Gothard to a five-year term on the Anderson Township Zoning Commission to expire December 31, 2018. And Christine Cook is the number as the first alternate, and Jay Lewis is the second alternate to the Anderson Township Zoning Commission for 2014. Second. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. The final one pertains to, like I said, five of our six non-statutory committees. Uh, this, this excludes the Economic Development Committee. We had a, a pretty large amount of interest for that committee and generally try to limit the membership to that group. So um, it does not include that at this point in time. It includes the other five, which include our uh, Greater Anderson Township Betterment Commission, which is a 501c3 organization established by the township. Um, if it pleases the board, I'd be happy to read through this motion. If there's any questions, perhaps we can take it that way, unless we want to say everyone's name twice. But I'll, I'll, I'll take the first stab and let you all figure out how you want to handle that. <laughs> so um, the first one is the motion reads to uh, point Clyde Dial as chair, Kevin Carter, Nancy Downs, Jennifer Flinchpaw, Jim Graff, Jim Hay, Chris Houston, Joyce Nelson, Dottie Scott, Sonia Shively, 
Kathleen Wagoner and Phil Zimmerman Jacobson to the Anderson Township Betterment and Beautification Committee for 2014. Ron Edgerton is chair, Paul Brosh, Ken Ferrier, Dwight Poffenberger, Russ Rome, Rick Voss, Ken Dietz as fiscal officer, and Vivian Keel as secretary to the Anderson Township Green Space Advisory <coughs> Committee for 2014. Attorney Selfridge is chair, Ann Berghausen, Bob Buck, John Sissel, Dennis Conair, Dick Erkbacher, Adrian Eastlake, Steve Fagans, Michael Jordan, Joe Heiss, Michael Kennedy, Robert Knight, Pinky Kokosius, Ken Kushner, Jay Lewis, Mike Niehaus, Karen Schwamberger, Carl Sieber, Dottie Scott, Paul Sheckles, Paul Cyan, Ken Vincent, Mike Wagle, Matt Wehrmeyer, and Kurt Wells as members of the Anderson Township Transportation Advisory Committee for 2014. Bruce Bruno is chair, Scott Burline, Paul Brosh, Josh Eastlake, Jennifer Flinchpaw, Ken Furrier, Jim Graff, Tim Kloppenberg, Sonia Shively, and Rick Voss as members of the Anderson Township Street Committee for 2014, and Stuart Durnett, Ron Edgerton, Fred Hayes, Carl Stein Manis, and Ann Zimmerman as members of the Anderson Township Betterment Commission for 2014. Again, if you're, if you're counting at home, that's 66 individuals. They certainly should have their names read two or three times for the service that they provide to our community but that would be staff's recommendation for appointments for 2014. That was going to be my motion, so. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll so move. We have a motion. Uh, yeah. Second. Yeah, Mr. Ryan. Do you have some discussion here, Steve? With the um, Economic Development Committee, mm -hmm. um, there's, I think there's been a standing rule on this that uh, if there's gonna be a trustee representative on a committee, it probably would not be good practice to have two potential trustees on, on a committee. And I think that's, um, there's been a lot of interest in the Economic Development Committee. And to, I'm disappointed that we're holding appointment of those folks up uh, because of that, that perhaps conflict. That's a consideration for a future board. I understand. Okay. Um, there's also, uh, one other thing I'd like to point out is that there is a, another citizens committee that we do. Um, appoint folks to and there isn't I understand there is an opening on the park board committee um, but that's I think that we make those those appointments are made in for a May beginning but there there is an opening on the park board also there is an opening and uh, that uh, call for um, uh, persons of interest is forthcoming uh, I would allow Ms. Earhart or Ms. Parker to comment on that yeah. time frame okay if I may you. interject the opening does not occur until January 1st right so. okay. And there that is go. not a committee of this township. It's, the it's statute is quite clear. I, I, I the statute is quite clear that that is not a committee of this township. Well, moving, like to, moving forward. If I could clarify my statement, ma'am, uh, that we appoint members to that, to that board. I'd like to be yes. clear on that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. okay. Do we have a motion on these recommendations? Did if, you make the motion? I made the motion. And if I could just add also, the folks that were interested in those committees that we've identified tonight, those are that's basically everyone who's expressed interest we were able to accommodate. We're not sure what route we'll have with the Economic Development Committee. Some of those folks that may not be appointed next year could always be added to one of these boards when that time frame comes. So we do make an effort to try to include as much participation as possible. That's what we've done here. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the second item I have pertains to the Greenfield Plant Farm, or as we refer to it, the Clark Mesmer uh, property at the corner of Clough Pike and Hunley Road. Uh, we've had a lease agreement with Greenfield um, since April of 2003. That lease agreement expired earlier this year and late last year in anticipation of that, this board entered into an uh, addendum to that agreement for two years with uh, Greenfield Plant Farm. Uh, Greenfield Plant Farm is concerned expanding and changing some of their ownership and their um, investors and has come back to the township and requested an extension to that lease agreement. We have developed a draft lease agreement for their consideration that would uh, extend that for a period of 10 years and hopefully would warrant even additional investment into the property uh, by the new investors. And so there is a motion, and um, again, this is uh, subject to Greenfield's approval, of course, but we uh, have a motion before the board uh, for amendment number two to that lease. I would move that we authorize the township administrator to sign amendment amendment number two to the Clark Mesmer property lease subject to review by the law director. Second. 
Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. So I'm, I'm pleased to um, approve this long-term lease with a very long time yes. staple of our uh, business community. So best of luck to those folks. They certainly here. are. Thank you. Yeah. And I'll pass it back to Ms. Yes. Parker. Ms. Thank Parker you. has the next two items for the board's consideration. Thank you. Uh, my first item is to update the board on how we're progressing with our electricity aggregation plan. I'm pleased to report that I have received four final proposals from four different suppliers. I expect to receive two or three more between now and the deadline of next Wednesday. I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing so far. Uh, there are some really creative ideas out there about how to save our residents money and uh, I, I'm looking forward to bringing that to the board on the December 5th workshop meeting uh, to discuss in more detail once I've received all of the proposals. And tying back to what uh, you were talking about earlier, Ms. Hardy, uh, I'm, I know of at least one proposal that is the electricity is supplied 100% from local Ohio wind farms. Uh, and I expect there will either be uh, a range of 100% uh, renewable energy production in some of the other quotes. It may range from 100% to some mixture. Uh, I won't know till I've had them all in. But as I said, the, I'm really glad to see the, the suppliers using some creative and uh, sustainable approaches in their proposals. Um, I have a question for Ms. Hardy. Where is a, a, a large wind farm in Ohio? I should know that, but I don't. Or Van Van Wert. Yeah, I'm not. Up, uh, is it uh, State uh, Route? Is it 30? I think it goes from Lima over to uh, towards Fort Wayne. Oh, okay. Just south of the um, Ohio Turnpike by a number. Yeah, because there's a, a large it's wind. East west, and and they're uh, they're probably 200. Uh, Windmills. Yeah, actually, I drove to south of that highway. Yeah, I drove to Chicago just earlier this week, and there's a very large wind farm up on 65. I mean, it's very impressive. So I, th I think there are more and more going in right. every day. Okay, thank yes. you. Thank you for this update. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, my next item has to do with the uh, renewal of the townships, uh, a, a cluster of uh, insurance programs that cover employees. These are the include the dental plan, the vision, and the long-term disability insurance. I believe you each have a memo that outlines each of those plans and their corresponding um, rate increases, which are very modest. And I don't know if you have any questions before we move on to a motion covering that. Um, any questions about those increases? I know uh, compared to what a lot of jurisdictions and private companies have been receiving, these are very much in line. And in fact, uh, for dental coverage, it's getting harder and harder to find that period. There are fewer and fewer providers uh, carrying that. Okay. I have no questions. Can we move forward? Um, on the uh, dental uh, part, we're contractually obligated to provide dental yes. coverage yes. Uh, under our, our union contracts. That's so. correct. Yes. I've got a question on the IMED. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I am uh, offended that these folks blame a 2.9 percent increase on the Affordable Care Act. Uh, you know, you can blame a lot of things on the Affordable Care Act, but um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not buying that one. That, that's nonsense. Sounds like some salesman giving you a song and dance. So. And, and that could be. They didn't specify in their letter exactly what that was tied to within the Affordable Care Act. And I um, have been curious also and would like to uh, find out some more from them exactly what is that tied to. Hmm. I'm with Mr. Jackson. I think there's a salesman involved with this somewhere. <laughs> could be, yes. Yeah. Anybody? Yes. I would move that uh, we authorize the renewal of the township's 2014 insurance plans as follows. Dental coverage with Dental Care Plus, vision coverage with IMED, long-term disability with MetLife. Second. 
Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, in addition to the board appointing citizens to serve on various committees, we have developed some teams, employee-led teams, over the last several years to research different items, uh, to bring policies, potential policies before the board. And one such team is our ethics team. Uh, the ethics team last year uh, did research on the ethics statutes and recommended an ethics policy which this board approved. Part of the approval process involved the creation of an ethics panel uh, consisting of one representative from each department and that panel will serve to ensure that township employees are educated on the ethics statutes and they continue to keep up with changes in ethics laws and to also facilitate uh, employee questions. If there are questions that arise from employees, each department has a representative that they can go to to seek assistance. Uh, I serve as a facilitator of the group. In my absence, it would fall to Mr. Severs or Ms. Parker, and Mrs. Comey is our advisor on that panel. Uh, we do have some individual employees who have volunteered to serve on that panel, and the ethics team has a recommendation before the board for your consideration. I would move that we appoint Becky Campbell, Public Works, Tom Caruso, Planning and Zoning, and Lieber Schmidt, Fiscal Office, to the Ethics Panel for one-year terms beginning January 1, 2014, and ending December 31st, 2014. And further appoint Carrie, uh, Corey Bauer, Fire and Rescue, and Betty Cow in Administration to the Ethics Panel for two-year terms beginning January 1, 2014, and ending December 31st, 2014. 15. Second. A brief discussion here, ma'am. Some of the names, I'm, I'm very pleased to see some of the names that are relatively new employees to the township stepping up and devoting their time to this. Yes. Um, and helping work with their fellow department employees. Um, that's very commendable. Thank you. Yes. Pass Thank you. Along. I will. Thank you. Mr. Deese. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Mr. Jackson. Yes. Ms. Rice. Yes. Hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, the next item before the board is the uh, annual renewal of our membership in the Coalition of Large Ohio Urban Townships. Uh, the coalition was formed as an outgrowth. It's a committee of the Ohio Township Association. Uh, membership in the coalition is limited to uh, townships with 15,000 or more population in the unincorporated area or a budget of $3 million or more. Uh, the entity exists in order to further legislation to seek legislative change uh, to inform its members of pending legislation such as the annexation bill or the jed bill uh, to make sure that local elected officials and township administrators and staff have an opportunity to weigh in on the proposed legislation um, as the board is aware i'm finishing up my fourth year as chair of the statewide organization uh, the coalition's annual meeting will be held in February in Columbus at which time there will be an election of representatives uh, each of the four jurisdictions or each of the four uh, regions of the state has three representatives and uh, most of those representatives are elected officials there are a few township administrators that sit on that executive committee as well um, the membership renewal is two hundred dollars and there's a motion before you I would move that we authorize membership in the Coalition of Large Urban Townships, CLOUT, which is part of the Ohio Township Association for the year 2014 in an amount not to exceed $200. Second. Um, brief discussion. I think this is the best $200 we spend each year, in my opinion. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. Next item on the agenda is just an update on upcoming events. Uh, the 41st annual Thanksgiving breakfast sponsored by the Anderson Area Chamber of Commerce will take place on Wednesday, November 27th from 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. at Anderson Hills United Methodist Church. The township's annual tree lighting will occur at Anderson Town Center on Saturday, December 7th, beginning at 4 p.m. and ending at 6.30 p.m. Uh, the tree will be lit at 6 p.m. I believe Santa arrives somewhere around 5, 4, 4, okay, 4.15. Santa will be there, so, uh, and Santa will arrive as customary on a fire engine. 
The Anderson Community Band is holding a concert on Sunday, December the 22nd at 7 p.m. The concert is free to the community. It will be held here in our Anderson Center Theater. And the Anderson Farmers Market will continue operation at Anderson Center Station on Saturdays from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30. That is until Saturday, December 14th. That's their last day of operation until next spring. We'd also like to remind, remind our residents that the Anderson Township History Room is open year-round on Tuesdays from 6 to 9 p.m. and Wednesdays and Sundays from 1 to 4 p.m. And we certainly thank the Anderson Township Historical Society who provide volunteer docents to uh, walk citizens through that very impressive history room. There is one item arising from executive session discussions for the board's consideration. It involves a memorandum of understanding with the Anderson Township Professional Firefighters Association as presented to the board. I would move that we authorize the township administrator to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Anderson Township Professional Firefighters Association, IAFF Local 3111, as presented. Second. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. Thank you. Before I turn the meeting back over to the board for a portion of the 2014 organizational structure, I would like to wish the board a happy Thanksgiving on behalf of staff and also a happy Thanksgiving to our residents. Thank you. That's all I have Thank this you. evening. <clears throat> um, this is a portion of our meeting which is the uh, 2014 organizational meeting. It's a little tedious. It is a lot of resolutions that we need to um, make to move us forward into the year 2014. And um, so we, the first one is regarding temporary appropriations. Do I have a motion? I would move that we adopt the temporary appropriations for 2014 as presented by Mr. Dietz as follows. And I'm not going to read the details, but there's a total of $34,300,785 as temporary appropriations. Second. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. I'll make the next motion, if I may. I move to appoint uh, Mr. Uh, Russ Jackson as Anderson Township's representative to the Board of Directors of the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana Regional Council of Governments. Second. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. Ready? Yes. I would move that uh, the Auditor and Treasurer of Hamilton County, in accordance with RC 321.34, be requested to draw and pay to Anderson Township during 2014 upon the written request to the County Auditor by Kenneth G. Dietz, Fiscal Officer, funds due in any settlement of 2014 derived from taxes or other sources payable up by law to the County Treasurer and held in the County Treasurer Treasury to the account of Anderson Township and lawfully applicable for the purposes of the 2014 fiscal year, and B, the fiscal officer is requested under RC 321.341 to seek periodic advances of taxes to be drawn on the undivided estate tax fund, and C, the fiscal officer shall forward to the county auditor a certified copy of this resolution. Second. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. And I would move that uh, a regular meeting of this board be held on Thursday, January 23rd, 2014 at 5.30 p.m., beginning with executive session, with the public portion of the meeting commencing at 6 p.m., and that a regular interim workshop meeting of the board be held on Thursday, January 9th, 2014 at 1 p.m., both unless notice indicating otherwise is duly given, be it further resolved that the practice and procedure of adopting the agenda, which includes the rules pertaining to public forum, at each regular meeting of this board shall continue to be the practice and procedure at meetings in 2014. Second. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. I would, I would move that we adopt a resolution and order employing Thomas C. Corby, John W. Lindenberg, Jeffrey S. Shoskin, Thomas B. Allen, Scott R. Brown, Gary E. Powell, and Wanda L. Carter as township attorneys for particular matters for the year 2014. Second. Mr. O'Brien? 
Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. That's it, isn't it? That's it. Thank you for that recitation. <laughs> thank you. Anyway, and thank you for um, your patience with us. Those are housekeeping items that we need to do. Um, I believe that concludes our agenda for this evening. Uh, I will tell you that our next televised board meeting will be on December 19th, 2013 uh, at 6 p.m. Before I ask for a motion uh, to adjourn, I need to make an announcement that um, we've just held uh, yet another wonderful election here in Anderson Township, uh, including the election of two new trustees. Um, in six previous elections, you had the opportunity to see my name on that ballot. And because of my decision to retire from public service, that was not the case in this November. Um, regarding uh, that retirement, I happen to be dealing with Ohio Public Employees uh, Retirement System, which is the state system that governs our retirement. And because of their rules and regulations about uh, retirement time, I have to announce that this will be my last meeting where I will be presiding as um, your trustee. Um, I, will, um, I will certainly attend the December meeting, and we can say some goodbyes at that time. Um, but right for now, this, you know, this is it. And you know, it's sad, sadly. But um, as I said, we'll see you in, in uh, December. Ms. Rice, it's been a pleasure to serve with you. Thank you. I've learned a lot in my time here on the board. I've learned a lot about Anderson Township. I've learned about governance of township. And I have a lot. I have to thank you for, for much of that information and knowledge. So thank you again very much. You're very welcome. I'm planning to say nice things about you. But, uh, <laughs> well, you can, you can say them. And we, the next meeting, no, if that's, that's okay. That's all right. We that's, look forward to That's it. perfectly all right. And I am also going to wait. <laughs> I have a story to tell about you, so. <laughs> oh, the stories. Oh, the stories. I'm not going to okay. say anything about your age, I promise. Do you realize that you are now graduated to the uh, oldest trustee of Portland Township trustees? Uh, yes, I oh, and, and my goodness. I can care about it. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, and I will entertain a, a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Rice? Yes. We are adjourned. Thank you.